it out guys. I've got my daughter a tent for the garden whilst the weather's good. She's filled it up with her babies, look. <laughs> oh dear, she loves it though. She loves the camping life. So excuse all the baby paraphernalia in the garden. Um, there's the bike. Now the reason it's outside and not in the garage is because, and it ain't great news, let me tell you that, it's not like I've got another five bikes in there and I had to make room and get Big Bertha out. But the reason, well before I carry on, we've got something for the bike there, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Um, the garage door is knackered. Now, do you remember a few, uh, like two weeks ago, we had that really, really hot day, whether it was like 38 degrees or something like that. I don't know whether that was the cause of it, but it happened directly after that. When I went to open the door, now, if you look on this side, there's a metal wire which runs around this spool when you open it, which keeps the tension on the spring, apparently. This side, when I opened the door, I got to about halfway and I heard this almighty sort of metallic grinding noise. And all the wire had come off the spool and bunched up in there in like this big knot. So I couldn't open the door. I couldn't close it. It was at this funny, jaunty angle. Actually, I'll show you the footage which I caught on the security camera. I mean, look at that, look at the angle that's at. So, so like I said, I couldn't shut the door, I couldn't open it any further. So I had to cut the cable to release the door. The door came slamming down. It's now locked, which is good, but I cannot open it. I can't open the door and I don't want to try because I don't want it to come off the rails because on this side, the runner, you can see there where it's all sort of bent out of shape and it's the same, actually it's a bit worse on that side because that's where the main issue was. So the door's, the door's knackered. I was, I was not happy. There may have been a few swear words muttered. Um, so uh, I phoned up the garage company and they said, well, you're out of warranty, which is, you know, to be expected. Um, but they can't send anyone around until, I think they said uh, early November, which is like, whatever. Whatever, I'm just glad it's locked. Um, the bike the bike will be fine outside in the garden. It's secure out there. But yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. It's a real, real pain in the Gary Glitter. Let's have a look. I don't, rec I don't recall buying any bullets. I really don't recall buying any bullets, but we'll have a look in here, see what it is. All right, now, if you watched the last vlog, you'll probably, um, probably have a rough idea of what this might be. Yamo. It is the Argos Cheapo Special. Not Argos, I'm not talking about Amazon. Cheapo Special uh, wind deflector for the windscreen on the bike. Um, so we're going to stick this on now. We're going to take it out for a ride and I'm going to um, stick the old GoPro on and tell you how effective these things are. So uh, yeah, let's whack it on the bike. Actually looks quite nice, considering it was only like 16 quid. Cool. Now, oh my God, I'm getting attacked by the petunias. It didn't actually come with any, um, any instructions. So it should be pretty easy to, to stick on. Let's have a look. So we've got some adjustable arms here. They go down like that. I presume that clicks around there. That goes on there. That's like that. Okay. Oh, we are talking mega nerd. All right, so that, all right. So it's got two little levers on the front. You just push them down. Is that right? What am I doing wrong here? Oh my God, the thing's just come off. What's happening? Oh my God. Oh my God, I broke it already. Oh my God. Why is it so loose? What am I doing wrong? Probably everything known me.
Is there something else in the box I'm supposed to have? God, you know what? I'm such a knuckle dragging oaf. Look, it came with. <laughs> it came. Oh! My God. It came with all these extra bits, all these rubber bits to go in there. But now old Billy Boy's just got to stick it on and just, you know. Tip, that is typical me, that is. All right, let's get this off and do it properly. Such a dope. All right, so we've got these little rubber mounts. Look at me telling you, like, yes, yeah, so this is what you've got to do. <laughs> oh dear. Right. I mean, you must admit, on this channel, I do show all the cock ups. Yeah, you got to, you have to, you have to respect that, right? So that goes on there. All right, here we go. Hold on, what's these bits for? See now, if it came with instructions. Um, ah, right. Okay. So that bit sits. in there okay and that presses against right so that bit goes in first does it billy are you quite sure about that you're an expert are you we'll stick these on the bike first like this and then we'll put these little plastic inserts in all right let's try that all right that's on now so now i've got to put these little grub screws into these plastic ins where are you? Into this <laughs> insert. How many of these? Where are you? How many of these am I gonna lose? How many times am I gonna drop this? There's one. Don't drop it, Billy, don't drop it. Oh God, if this thing goes, it goes forever. Yes. Look how proud I am for not dropping a screw. I don't believe I just stuck it on for oh, that's not fitting right, is it? Good dope. Oh, that feels pretty secure, that feels pretty good. All right, I think that'll do it. I don't want to tighten them up too much. So how do we adjust this thing? Lateral flappage. Can it go forward? Yeah, it must be able to. Oh, maybe that's what those little bits are for. Let's, so it's got those two bits there, I think. Turn it. Okay, now you can just bring it forward and it's on like a little ratchet system and then you lock it again, lock it and that stays in place. All right, so I can adjust it that way. Oh, look at that. Oh, total nerd fest. Oh, yes, my name is Norbert, um, Norbert Cheese Minger. About eight o'clock at night here at the moment, so tomorrow morning when we set off for work, we're going to see just how well my extra flappage does. Yes. How to make the world's nerdiest bike even nerdier. <laughs> I love it. Right. See you lot in the morning. All right, uh, let's get cracking. Let's do a flap test. Um, we poor old garage door. All right, yeah, she looks all right, I think. I'm gonna leave it like, oh, just leave your flaps alone, Billy. Just move. 
I bought my daughter um, a little uh, remote control helicopter and it flew into that guy's garden <laughs> yesterday so he's going to wake up today and uh, see there's a helicopter in his back garden yeah this little uh, it's, it's only this little cheap one I got from um, John Lewis this little helicopter and we did it in the front room and it's going right up to the ceiling really quick I said how nice small it was like it's no bigger than your thumb this little thing so I said to him right let's take it outside you know really stretch its legs and the thing just shot right up and it went out of range of the little crappy controller and it just it just went right it just veered right and then it um, it just stopped and crash landed in the in the uh, that garden there yeah she was not happy um, so I promised I'll get her a new one because uh, I'm the best dad in the world Right, so before we get on the old A2 here and put this flap to the test I um, do you remember that picture I put up uh, it was the end of one video and it was me doing a bit of um, what I call cam planking just a laugh you know well there's another guy who follows me on uh, YouTube and he sent me a, uh, an image of him <laughs> doing the same thing on Instagram which I love and then yesterday he sent me a picture of his brother doing it so <laughs> look at this amazing I love stuff like this so this is my request to you if you are going out camping or caravanning any of those sort of things please do me a favor get a camp planking shot in and I'll get you on the old uh, Instagram and I'll, I'll feature you on the next vlog and uh yeah because it's a laugh it's stupid and it was done years ago like this is nothing new this planking thing but um mine is a strictly camping themed planking situation okay oh the bike feels great today i've got to put i put 50 quid in the tank the other day i absolutely brimmed it the petrol's gone down to i think one 75 in here or something what does it say oh look 174 174.9 so that's the lowest it's been in quite a while so um i thought you know what let's uh let's uh let's splash out and i brimmed it and i've got 385 miles left you know one day i, I am going to do a an actual test on this bike i'm going to brim the tank and i'm just going to ride to the point where it runs out of petrol and the bike grinds to a halt and i'm going to see how many miles a full tank can do um because i want to know when the red when the uh, when the fuel light comes on how many miles do i have left that's what i want to do oh god this bike feels amazing That's one of the benefits of working at the weekend is you just get out on the road and there's no traffic about. It's beautiful. It is really beautiful. I mean, you still get complete nutters on the road, but uh, you know. So what's new? Da, 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 da. Oh yes, look at the handling prowess. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. Woo! Oh, he hugs the corner. He's hugging the apex. He's taking the racing line. Right, let's um, see how good this flappy thing is. Let's put it to the test. Right, let's put the screen right up in my usual position. Oh my God. That works amazing. <laughs> oh my God, that is brilliant. 
I mean, this this is right in the right in my eye line, basically. This uh, this clip-on screen, which is good because I can see through it, obviously. Oh wow, that is uh, very effective. Let me just have a little fiddle with that. Yeah. Oh my god. That is brilliant. Uh, so there you go. I mean, as expected. I mean, why wouldn't it work? It's made your screen bigger. Yeah, that is brilliant. So, um, like I said before, this is a completely stock screen which comes with a GS at its highest position. Um, which was absolutely fine. That was more than enough for me. But there's, uh, you get a bit of buffeting on the top of the helmet. Nothing drastic at all. Completely livable. But with this thing, it completely gets rid of it altogether. I can feel it on my arms, but that's it now. Wow. I mean, I'm not too sure what it would be like if it's raining and I've got to look through it. And it is well well dorky looking I mean look at it it's like putting an extra pair of spectacles and a and a brown cardigan on Bill Gates but uh, I don't really care anymore I don't really care about what it looks like I mean I love the, the bike itself is an amazing looking bike and I think the fact it is so uncool is the thing that makes it cool in my book you know what I mean it's one of the cool nerds and uh, the beauty of it is it doesn't care this bike is well aware of what it's capable of it doesn't pretend to be anything else yeah I love it yeah well impressed with that flap that'd be great on the tour especially with doing a lot of motorway miles Just lift up the old oh yes I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't think I'm going to pull any ladies rocking up to a bike event with my adjustable wind deflector. But then again, maybe I will. Let's see what it's like when the screen is at its lowest. I mean, one thing I will say, it definitely makes the the standard screen flap a bit more than normal I guess because of all the extra sort of leverage on it so what's it like at its lowest position yes that is nice you know what talking of flaps I might have to do the old um, double arm flap initiation oh look at that McLaren oh nice Oh, double flappage. Or as I say in Italy, a duo a flappigio. Or as I say in Germany, zwei flappen. Or as I say in um, Cockney rhyming slang, the old uh, the old bubble uh, bubble trap. Okay, you got a pair of the old bubble traps there, mate. The old bubble traps, double flaps. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, sweet, sweet, yeah. Oh, dead fox. Oh, God, that's a fresh one. Um, closing the flaps because it's too effing cold. Um, initiate cruise control. Cruise control on. No, it's not. <laughs> now it's on. I can do flap closure. Oh, my God, it's freezing. <laughs> what was I thinking? Ugh. All right. No, it's still not closed. Quick, Billy, quick! Cruise control off. Flap closure initiated. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so my uh, overall uh, opinion on the uh, windscreen extender is it's very, very good. Very effective. 
if you can stomach the looks then um, yeah treat yourself I think it's 16 quid from uh, Amazon I'll leave a link down below and it's of course it's not just specific to this bike it can fit on any windscreen I think because they're quite uh, you can move those around quite a bit the little arms on it and don't be a moron like I was and just stick it on and go what is it fitting it's rubbish like a complete dimwit I mean how many times have I done that where I've I've just gone in like you know ham fisted why is it not fitting it's rubbish they designed it wrong and then realised that I'm, I'm, I'm the moron <laughs> don't need instructions that's for wimps actually it didn't even come with instructions so that's my excuse okay yeah, I'm well gutted about my garage door that really really peed me off I was not happy I mean I imagine it's going to cost God knows, 300 to 500 quid to fix because all the rails on the side are sort of um, bent. But if they can do a cheap fix or not, I don't know. It's such so annoying, so annoying. And that's the thing. I've been doing good this month. I've been sticking loads of stuff on eBay. I've been making quite a bit of money on there. Um, and a big chunk of that money is going to go on something which shouldn't really have to happen. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't have to spend, you know, three hundred odd quid on my garage door to get it sorted. But there you go. You know, I mean, I say I say it was that excessive heat we had. Maybe it warped something. It put something slightly out of kilter. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that wire was corroded somewhere where I couldn't see it and it rusted to a point where it just, um, you know, just snaps. Not sure. God, what is all that purple shit? Oh my god. Sweet. Sweet victory, yeah! Oh nice, Ducati! Street Fighter! That um, Street Fighter that Ducati did, the one with the, f the, uh, the aero flaps on the side, that thing just looks like it'll rip your arms off. What an absolute, like, maniac that thing looks like. Beautiful looking bike. But it's got to a stage now where the bikes are putting out so much power, they have to have wings on them to stop them taking off. You know, effectively, creating downforce and all that sort of stuff. Madness. But great, thank God we've got that. Oh, I missed World of Hat. Oh. It's probably closed anyway, stocking up on new hats. World of Hat, where all your hat dreams come true. World of Hat. The size of this bloody thing. Proceed with caution, Billy. Proceed with caution. delightful motorcycle this is so sort of gentle and easy going you know what every Saturday I come up here I always see a couple of crackheads having an argument or doing something and there's two over there yeah this is um crackhead paradise That's the weird thing, like something that I've noticed 
in all my years of coming up London and see, seeing all the nutty crackheads, there's one thing that usually, um, there's one thing that you see them do all the time, and they'll be like, for example, there'll be two crackheads at the front, right, having an argument, and there's always one straggler. There's always a straggler behind them, like a, a few meters back, and they're always arguing. <laughs> It's like, what, what are you arguing about? What's the problem? You sit on your ass and take drugs all day. And they're, they always look like they're in a rush. Come on, come on, we can't go. You have a look, next time you see a couple of crackheads, there's, like, if there's two crackheads, there'll be one behind. If there's three crackheads, there'll be two up front and one behind. There's always a straggler. And there's always a straggler, and they always look like they're in a rush, and they're always arguing. Those are the three common traits of your modern crackhead. There you go, so that's my little sort of social observation there for you. Yeah, this bike is just so sort of it just feels so relaxed and, and takes everything in its stride. It's a very, very classy bike. Very, very classy. Uh, it feels, I imagine, if you've got a piggyback from Humphrey Bogart, that this is what this bike feels like. A piggyback from Humphrey Bogart. It's smooth, it's relaxed, it's classy, it's a little bit quirky looking. Yeah, it's just the Humphrey Bogart of motorcycles. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. It's not traditionally handsome but it is handsome. You know, it's not handsome in the George Clooney sense. Yeah, this is, this is Humphrey Bogart. Yeah, that's a nice bike you got there, boy. Yeah. Is that Humphrey Bogart? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, play it again, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you playing again, Sam? Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Show me these roads aren't like Humphrey Bogart. Bloody hell. Oh. Okay, that's it. That's uh, another 20 minutes of absolute pearls of wisdom. Have a lovely weekend, guys, and I'll see you all uh, very soon. Take it easy. Adios, muchachos. Yeah, just leave the bike on, Billy. Just walk away, leave it on. Sod it. God. I'm getting worse. I'm only 22 years old. <coughs> oh, look at the flappage on it. That looks all right, actually. Yes. I like it. I'm a big fan of the flap. Which kind of begs the question, what else can I get for this bike? I did actually see they do um, bags that fit here and here. I'm thinking, do I need more bags on this bike? <laughs> do, I need, do I need more man bags? I don't think I do. Come on, Big Bertha. Come on, easy does it. Easy does it. Easy. Oh. Oh. Nice. Oh, oh gee, help, help. Oh. <sighs>